and I just finished watching the Mike Tyson documentary that went on for the last two Tuesdays. And I grew up in this era where he was like my biggest fan and then he had his biggest plummet from stardom and then his turn and coming back to this place of humility <clears throat> and even a sense of greatness uh, on the, as a way, as a way to come back. Yes. And a big car fan. That's right. Um, so watching the documentary, it really sparked some thoughts for me as a person. I feel like I think we should all be chasing after our own version of greatness and living out all that we're called to be. And I had so many reflections from watching this Tyson documentary and how he was groomed and how he was mentored and how he was trained and then also his upbringing his background and how that impacted um, what he did and there were some negative things that happened in his past and those negative things that happened in his past made him the great fighter that he was because he's fighting from a place of fear and now he's coming back and now he's fighting from a place of joy and in loving it and just raising funds and doing these things and you hear the humility that comes from wisdom and wisdom that comes from experience and all of these different things and and it's reignited my passion and not even my passion my my fandom of Mike Tyson whereas the time when he was like my when I was a kid he was like my star and then that whole situation happened with him biting uh Holyfield's ear and then there's this fall from grace um all of this circled back to one line in the documentary last night He's asked about greatness, and the line that he used was something that was so simple and yet so profound, and I really liked it. And he said this, he was asked about success, and he said, success for me is being responsible and being present. Success for me is being responsible and being present. That is Mike Tyson's definition of success. As we unpack that, I have to say I agree. There's a responsibility of understanding what is in your hands. Or am I being faithful with the things that are given to me? Am I using them to the best of my ability? Am I bringing them to fruition? Am I making them better than what the, the way I found them? And being present, enjoying the moment, not being so fixated on what can be or what used to be, but just being right here. So I'm grateful for having an opportunity to watch that and to hear his journey and all of us have a similar journey we may not have as many eyeballs on us as he did but we're all on this journey and for him to land at success as being being responsible and being present i really like that so i wanted to just throw that out there for your for your thoughts if you have any comments on that please throw it in the comment section what's your thoughts on that definition of success being responsible and being present Cello, good to see you. Olga, good to see you. Usually a bit of a delay when I throw stuff like that out, so I'll just wait for a moment. It's interesting, you know, like the being present part is something that um, hearing it come from him, you think that he was present. Like when you walk into a, a boxing match, there's nowhere to be but presence. You can't be thinking about doing your groceries when someone's trying to punch you in the face. There's, you can't be anywhere else. So you think that he was present. You think that he was present in those moments. So for him to say, being present is important. I think that is huge, Sonny. Yes, absolutely. That is so huge. Because it's not like he had a life and role where he wouldn't have been present. You cannot do that and not be present for a living. So, that sense. What's going on, Roxy? That, um, that was, that, that's why it gave me pause. Because it would be different if it was someone who 
kind of you know did something else with their life where being present wasn't something that was gonna enhance their ability to do it. He was the top of his game. He had to be present. And then for him to def define success now as being present and being responsible, I think of stewardship. I think of just being faithful to things that are in your hands to do. Like he opened with that, being faithful to my wife, being a good dad, being responsible. All of those things were the things that made him, that, that's, that covered his definition of success right now. So I just love that, and I've been musing on that. I'm gonna repost that later, and that even, might even be my finished Strong Friday for later this week as we talk about that, being responsible and being present. So there you go, thank you, Mike Tyson, for giving me some words to muse on and to throw back out to our people here. So um, also, uh, Toshiba is in the room, my guest from yesterday. If you didn't get a chance to watch yesterday's conversation, that was super fun and insightful, and I loved the um, some feedback I got from people. So people were messaging me afterwards to say that how that was inspiring. My wife watched it; she loved it as well. So if you get a chance to listen to someone outside of our Pilates world speak, like she did yesterday, and just get her perspective on life, relationships, balance, self care, all that warm, fuzzy stuff, um, that was uh, that was really good. So check that out. Catch her book as well, um, and uh, you'll see all the links for that in yesterday's conversation. All right, so here we are, and we have a Pilates Summit 2021 coming up here. Let me just catch this last comment here. Uh, for those who don't know, I always read the comments out because on the replays, they don't actually post the comments, so I might even do a screenshot from time to time just to make sure that it's getting there. And now what Helen said was being responsible, accepting our responsibilities for what we do slash have done. What we accept is uh, it brings reflection, maturity, forgiveness, and a sense of peace. He's got all of that going on. Absolutely, absolutely. That sense of peace and yes. Tasha, you just missed my conversation with Mike Tyson and his, his words of wisdom yesterday on his special if you watched it. Um, I'd love to have you on to discuss that because I thought it was pretty cool. One more thing. Um, I didn't say this yesterday when Toshiba was on, but she was talking about how when she was walking through her, her life's journey, how she didn't cry. And she had to find that place where it was welcomed, encouraged, okay to cry. And Jenna Safino had a post a couple days ago where, maybe last week, where she was just sitting down and it was like her kids, were, her kid was off at daycare, her husband was off doing something, and um, and there was a bunch of things that were on the world, and then she was in this spot where she had time for herself, she didn't have the responsibility of her child, her husband was off doing his own thing, and she sat there and just softly wept and <laughs> took a picture of herself crying. And I just, you know, that resonated with me and I said in the comments that there is something about that moment where gratitude and peace collide. Where gratitude and peace collide and the tears start to fall. It was this moment and I saw it in her face and I totally got that because I've been in that place where you finally had the sense of peace. You could exhale, you could look around and you can just be present, like Tyson said, and feel that there's a sense of responsibility. Everything is taken care of. I am not needed in this moment, but to be present with myself, to be grateful with, for what I have and where I am and to find that peace. And I sent her a clip, a link to a picture of me driving from last year where I was in my car and I was coming up over this ridge on the highway, an on ramp onto another highway, and the sun just starts to break into the car. And I'm just cruising, just minding my own business, and then tears start to just roll down my face. Just a sense of, just like this half smile comes on my face, and the tears start to roll. And I was gonna, I think I was gonna say something, and then I just kinda just got lost in the moment. And it was the same moment where I was just like, so grateful for a moment where I could just be still. So grateful for that moment where I could just have a moment to myself. And it wasn't an expensive moment. I didn't have to pay for a spa retreat. I wasn't on vacation. I was just alone. And there's a sense of peace that rolled over. 
And my comment at that time was, it takes a lot of disquiet to come to this place of quiet. We all have so many things that are going on in our world, especially at this time, that pulls us in so many different directions, that draws us away from that center, distracts us, it tires us out. There's so many needs, so many things that just pull us away. And even in the midst of it, if you can just pull yourself back to that center, look around or be grateful for what you have and where you are, grateful for breath, grateful for life, for sight, for all these small things. Not grateful for cars and houses and it's like grateful for breath, grateful for a heartbeat. If you can come back to that place, that's when the tears flow. That's when you feel that sense of being a success. True success. Responsible and being present. It's good stuff. Good stuff. On that point, our thoughts, as uh, Helen says, our thoughts are what pulls away more than anything else. Right, exactly. There, It is those thoughts that pull us away. And those thoughts, we justify those thoughts by justify how important those other things are. There's a lot of things going on in our world. Here in Canada, like people are rocked by the indigenous communities, uh, you know, the findings with those 215 children and um, those bodies and, and what's happening in the US, what's happening all over the world, what's happening in Israel. Like it's just craziness that's happening. But all of it still comes back to understanding that we have to give the best version of ourselves to those things or we're useless to anybody else. The airplane analogy is one of the things that got me through in my darkest moments is being able to understand that if I put the oxygen mask on me first as this plane is going down, then I'm able to help those around me. I have no help to everyone else if I try and take care of them and I don't have any oxygen. And that's a tough pill to swallow for the Roxies of the world that there with a young child pulling at your clothes the whole time. There are some really vocal needs that are out there, but we still need to give the best version of ourselves to those things, the best that we can. We still need to take care of ourselves, even selfishly for a fragment of time to be able to come back stronger for those around us. That takes courage, that takes some discipline, that takes uh, some sense of not caring what people think about you while you take a moment to take care of yourself so that you can come back in strength. So find those moments, find those places of being present, of being grateful, finding peace. You can't compromise on those things. As much as the world will pull us in so many different directions and there are some valid needs, those valid needs are always going to be there. Take that moment for yourself so that you can come back stronger and be more effective in those situations that are most important to you. That's my public service announcement for today, and um, I'll probably repost this later for anyone who has those thoughts and who feels like those are distractions. So if you have any other comments, please put it in the comment section. Um, yeah, that's, I don't know where that came from, but I, that's kind of how I'm feeling these days. Dad goals. How do you balance it out with all these needs, right?